Hi everybody, it's Webflow Joe with an effin' sweet Webflow hack. In this hack, we learn how to create an age gate and block people who are under 21 from entering your site. We're gonna put an overlay, we're gonna have the user enter their birthday, and if they're under 21, sorry, can't enter. If you're over 21, we remove the overlay and show them the content. This hack comes direct from our hacks request form. Thank you, Sebastian from Right Visual for submitting this and getting us to put this hack together. Let's see how it works. We're in the live example and we see the age gate covering the entire size of the page. And the reason is it's the only thing on the page. We are on our dedicated success 21 age gate page and there is no other content here. This is the page we're going to send people to until they confirm their age. So if I were to go to another page in the site, and in this example, we're going to our age gate overview page, I'm gonna be redirected right back to the age gate page. So again, I'm gonna to try to go to FinSuite Hacks 21, and it's not gonna let me, it's going to immediately redirect me to this page. And I have to fill this out, confirm I'm over 21 before I can view that page. So let's fill this out, see how it works. I'm gonna put June 4th. I'm not going to be over 21 just yet. I'm born in 2003. And when I try to enter, it's not going to let me. And let's do this another time. Not over 21, sorry, it's not going to let me. This doesn't change anything. I still cannot access our page content. So now let me go ahead and enter a date that is definitely over 21. Let's do 1981. And when I click enter, I am going to be sent to the page content. And look, now I'm on page 21. I can reload and I have full access to the page content. So if I go and put that redirect code in the head of the site, it's going to block all pages from being viewed until that age gate is filled out. And yep, you can only see this page if you filled out the age gate, great. Let's just do a quick check. I'm gonna go and remove my cookies. So here I am checking out my cookies. I'm gonna remove that one cookie and now done. Now if I go to reload, I have to fill out the age gate again. So we remember that they're 21, they can continue viewing. If they clear their cookies, we need them to confirm again. All right, let's jump into Designer, see how all of this works. We're in Designer and we see our age gate on the page. This is a page dedicated for the age gate. There is nothing else on this page. There's no other structure. There's no page content. On the rest of your site, we don't have to do anything. We don't have to add any classes or IDs. It's just your page content. We're going to be adding some custom code in the head of the site. But as far as classes and structure for other pages, nothing. This is a brand new page. It just has the age gate. And this is where a lot of our custom code is going to go. And the structure here is also super important. So let's go and cover how this is set up. All right, first we have our age gate. We are set to position fixed. It is covering the entire size of the page. And if we go and jump inside the age gate, we're going to open up all of these divs and we're going to see that this is not using a Webflow form. We're using native Webflow form select fields, but there is no form. We don't need a form. And you can see here, there's no form structure. So the very first thing I'm gonna show you is how to add native select fields without the form structure, because it's not very straightforward when you first jump in. If I go and add an element and I try to go and drag in the select field, I'm gonna get red with an error message. Select field can only be placed in a form. If I drop it, I'm going to get this error message and it's not going to let me. So what do I have to do? I have to only hold down the Alt key in order to use this select field. So if I go and hold down Alt, I did that a little too fast, hold on. I'm gonna go and drag it in, it's a little bit more visual. 
if I go and hold down the Alt key, I'm now pressing on the Alt key on my keyboard, and I go and drag this select, I now see the orange and blue colors that I want. And if I go and drop this in, I can use the select field or any other form element without the form structure. So that's exactly what we did here. We are using these select fields because we want the native select field inside Webflow. Look at this, we have all of our choices, visual, we don't need to write any code, any HTML, we're not using a third party script or library to generate these, it is all native inside Webflow. So let's get into the IDs of this select field. The select field IDs are super important, if you don't have them, it's not going to work. Here on our month select field, we have an ID of verify month, on our day select field, we have an ID of verify day. And on the year select field, we have an ID of verify year. This is super important, make sure you have these. I also suggest copy and pasting this into your project. The year took a long time to add. Uh, all, adding all the way up to 1940 did take some time. It was not the most fun and exciting process. So go ahead, clone this project, copy and paste the whole entire age gate, and you can go and customize and design all you want. All right, and then the last piece that we must have here is our hack button, hack 21, age enter. So this button is not a link, it is not a form submit, it is just a div that looks like a button, and the way that we are turning this into a button to have some type of other functionality is with this class, hack 21, age enter. And lastly, we have our error message, which originally is going to be set to display none. When you publish your site, set it to display none. We're going to either show it and then hide it based on a user submission. So in the live example, I did an age that was not over 21. We're going to show this error message with JavaScript. But of course, you can go ahead and customize this, change the colors, change the structure. You can put it as text over here. You can put a big red box uh, throughout the entire age gate. You can do whatever you want here. Just make sure that you have this class hack 21 error. And again, we're gonna set this to display none because when we publish, we do not want this visible on load. And that's it for structure. Let's go into custom code and see how all this works. Let's break down this code line by line. Here inside the head tag, we have a check to see if the user has filled out the age gate. And if they haven't filled out the age gate, we're going to redirect them to the age gate page. All right, first let's break down this code, then let's talk about where you should be putting it inside your build. First, we're going to add the JS cookie library. The JS cookie library is going to let us work with cookies in a really easy way. And next, we're going to check if the user has the valid age cookie. We're gonna talk more about the valid age cookie in the part two of the code breakdown. This is just the check to see if they have it. So, if they do not have the valid age cookie, if they do not, this is do not, have the cookie, valid age, we're going to run this line. If they do have the valid age cookie, we do not run this line. So, they've never been to the site, they haven't filled out the age gate, they obviously do not have the valid age cookie. And that means we have to redirect them to our age gate page. So, if they filled out the age gate and they have that valid age cookie, they're never going to have this run. It's never gonna be a problem. They're going to view your site as they should. Now, this is probably going to go inside of your site settings head. This is inside page settings inside our Hack21 example. And the reason is we're not trying to gate our entire Hacks clonable site, so it's not in site settings. It's inside the page settings of 21. But we're 
probably going to be gating the entire website that you're working on. We're probably going to block every single page from access until they fill out the age gate. And in that case, this is going in the head of your entire site in site settings. And you can totally customize this age gate page. Uh, you can go ahead and call your age gate page like this. You can do the full website, uh, mywebsite.com slash age gate. Whatever page your age gate lives on is what goes inside this URL field. All right, let's jump into part two where we check the age and we actually give the valid age cookie. We're on the age gate page and we're going to go over the script that checks the user's age and gives them that valid age cookie. We are on the dedicated page for the age gate. This is not in site settings. This is not on page content. It's on the page that only has your age gate. All right, before the closing body tag, we need to make sure we have the JS cookie library loaded. In the part one of this code breakdown, if you did put that code in the head of the entire site, inside site settings, you can go ahead and remove this library script. We do not want to load this twice on the page. So if you have this line of code already inside site settings, we don't have to add it again. In our use case, we do need to add it because we don't have this inside site settings. All right, let's go over the script that's checking the age. On the submit button click, our hack 21 age enter class, when we go ahead and click that, we're going to take the value of the select fields that the user has selected. Okay, we're gonna take this verify year ID, which is the ID we gave to our year select field. We're going to take the value and we're gonna store it as a variable called year. Then we're going to do the same thing to month. We're going to take the month select field. We're going to take the value of it and we're gonna store it as a variable called month. And then the same thing for day. Day select field, let's get the value and store it as a variable called day. Now we have the information that the user has filled into the select fields. Now let's turn it into a readable date for JavaScript. We're going to create a variable called date and it's going to be the year dash month dash day. And it's going to create a date string just like this. So this date string would be September 2nd, 2000. And this is a way for JavaScript to understand this date and to start figuring out if they are over 21 or not. All right, if the user is over or equal to 21, we're going to run this code. If they are not over 21, we're going to run this code. Let's break this down a little bit further. If the getAge function returns less than, greater than, or equal to 21, we're going to give the user a valid age cookie which expires in 365 days. So you can make this expire tomorrow, you can make it expire never, but we are going to keep it one year. And after we give them that cookie, they're now confirmed, they can go ahead and visit all of the pages of the site because they have this valid age cookie. And then we're going to redirect them to the content that they can now view. So we're going to redirect to the Hacks 21 page. If you want to go and redirect to the home page, you can go and do it like this. You can also set your link to an absolute link and it can go like this. Great, so redirect them wherever you want. It could be a thank you page, it could be a loading page that then redirects to the page content, whatever you want. The point is, if they are over equal to 21, we're gonna run all this code. It's going to give them full access to the site for as long as you want them to have access for. And if they're not over 21, let's 
tell them, hey, you can't enter this site, you're not 21. So we're gonna show the error message and we're going to target our hack 21 error class. We're going to fade that div in 500 milliseconds and then we're gonna remove that message after two seconds of time. So after two seconds or 2000 milliseconds, we are going to take our hack 21 error class and fade it out 500 milliseconds. So not over 21, we're showing you a message. After two seconds, we're going to remove that message. If you don't want to fade that message out, you don't have to, you can go ahead and just remove this timeout. And if I were to go and remove the entire timeout, it would just show this error message and it would not go away. But I'm gonna go fade it out uh, because you may wanna do that. All right, great. And there's a really important part of this that I did not go over. And that is this really nifty get age function, which is accepting our date, which we established up here. So let's jump down into the get age function. We wrote this to check the user's age based on today's date. So of course, you're not gonna be able to update this every year, every month, every day to check if the user's over 21. We need to take today's date and calculate if the user is 21 today. All right, the get age function. It's going to accept our date and we are first going to get today's date, store it as a variable called today. Then we're going to get the user's birth date and we're going to store it as a variable called birth date. Then we're going to calculate the user's age. First, we're going to calculate the year. Then we're going to calculate the month. So first, we're going to create this variable called age. We're gonna take today's full year, right? We got today's date. We're gonna take the year of today and we're going to subtract it from the birth date, the user's birth date, and get the year of the user's birth date. We're gonna do the same thing for month. We're going to get a variable called month and we're going to take today's month and subtract it from the birth month of the user. And if the month is less than or equal to zero or today's date is less than the user's birth date, we're going to do a further check uh, and we're going to subtract the user's age by one. The reason we're doing this is if the user is about to turn 21, but they are not 21 just yet, we're going to run that check to make sure that we don't have a mismatch of the user's actual age and what they're about to turn later that month. And finally, we're going to return the user's age and that is the whole point of this get age function. And when we run our get age function, we're going to input our date that we established for the user. It's going to run through this function. And by the end of it, we're going to return the age. And the age is going to be 19, 20, 21, 56, whatever. And that's what we're going to use to determine if they are over 21 at 21 or under 21. And of course, you can go ahead and change this value. If you wanna check for 18, if you wanna check for 100, you can do whatever value you want here. We're checking for any age, but today we're checking for 21. Thank you so much for checking out this hack. Please clone the project. We have the entire hacks project available for clone. Start learning how these hacks work and use them on your live site. We're always releasing new hacks. So if you want to be updated, subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want a super simple plain text email when we release a new hack, sign up at finsuite.com slash hacks dash updates. If you want to request a hack, we'll check it out and see if it's possible in Webflow. Go to finsuite.com slash hacks dash request. That's effing sweet.